Hi, welcome from the lab where we're working on the new version of Snap 6. Snap 6 is all about scaling what you can do with Snap. We want you to be able to build larger projects with more blocks, but we also want you to be able to do more with fewer blocks. And in order to accomplish this, we've been inspired by the mathematician and computer scientist Kenneth Iverson. Ken Iverson made the programming language APL and also J. And we've been inspired by something that we call hyperblocks. Hyperblocks means we're able to use operators on scalars, matrices, and vectors. Let me show you. Here is the plus operator. When we do three plus four, two numbers, we get seven. Now, when we have a list of three numbers, say we've got the list um, one, two, three, and we want to have a new list where three is added to each element of the list. Usually what we do is we take map, we map over the list, and we map the three plus blank function over the list, and then we get a new list um, that says four, five, six. Now the idea about hyperblocks is that we don't use map for certain cases. We can still use it, but we don't need it. Instead, we can just directly add a scalar to a vector and we get this result immediately. But we can also have another list of say 10, 20, 30. And if we add the list 10, 20, 30 to the list 1, 2, 3, what happens is this. We take the first element of the left list and add it to the first um, element of the right list and then do the same thing for the second and the, and the third subsequent elements. And if one list is longer than the other one, we're just doing it for the ones that correspond. That's really the whole idea. So building on this, we can do some fun things. Um, so, we go to operators, we can get the, the Unicode of A, and it's a number, it's 97. We can also get the Unicode of Hello World, and now we get a list of numbers. Now, since this is a list, we can use the plus operator to add the plus 3 to every number. And likewise, we can take the Unicode, and it takes a number as letter, and we're getting a letter. But now if we put in a list of numbers, we get a list of characters. We can then split again. Uh, no, not. We can join again to again get a word. And this is how we can do a Caesar cipher very easily, right? Um, very directly, without having to use higher order functions. Um, let me quickly record something. I've actually looked for a quote of Ken Iverson, but they were too long. So I'm going to record a sound, and I'm going to record a famous quote by the inventor of media computation, uh, Mr. Mark Gasdiel, who once said, this is a test. This is a test. So here's my sound. This is a test. I go to the sound category and I can get the samples of my recording. And the samples of my recording are a bunch of numbers in between uh, minus one and plus one. And it's a lot of numbers, 152,600 uh, numbers. And I can do some of the fun things that Mark invented for media computation. For example, I can multiply these samples by 0.2, which is basically dividing them by 5, and I can play the sound now. 
Um, listen to what's happening now. Very soft because it decreases the amplitude. What if I say times three? This is a test. It is loud because it increases the amplitude. Um, there's also other fun things I can do using the list accessor. Um, so here are the, the numbers. The numbers block gives me the numbers from whatever is the beginning to the end. I can also say the numbers from 10 to 1, then it's counting down. Now I can also say, give me the numbers of the length of the recording. I was 152,600 till 1. Now I'm getting a list of 152,600 numbers. Um, and I can say, um, give me the item, instead of a number I'm putting in this whole long list of um, the samples. And look what's happening now. Listen closely. I've just, just reversed the sound. Again, no need to use loops. No need to use higher order functions even. We can just do this directly um, by using these vector operations. We can do other interesting things with this. So we can say, um, okay, we're taking the item, but we're starting at minus 5,000. And now this is 5,000 items longer than um, the samples of my sound. And um, so I'm taking this and I'm adding this list to the samples of the sound. So now I'm having this, I'm adding samples and I'm again dividing it by two to average it. So now what I'm getting is, check this out. An echo effect. Um, so this is a very powerful way to very quickly do some very interesting effects with media. So this is how this would work, you know, on single dimensional lists. Let's take something even more interesting. Let's make a picture. Uh, so I'm going to take a picture of um, myself. Here's a picture of myself. And we go to this category, I can get the pixels of the camera, and the pixels of the camera are a list. Here it's 172,000, and you know that a list, um, it's a table. A table really is a list of lists. Um, so here's, here's my, my picture. Now, remember when I said we can use these operators on vectors, but also on matrices. So this is a, a matrix. Um, so I can say, I can take these pixels and multiply them, and double them. So now I'm getting a new table where each number is doubled. And I can actually see what this looks like in which I switch to that costume. And look what happens to my, to my costume. Oh, it's getting brighter. I've just made the picture brighter. What happens if I divide it by two, if I multiply it by times five. Look at this. It's getting darker, but something else is also happening. It's also getting more transparent because it's being applied to every channel in the picture. So remember, we've got red, um, green, blue, and the alpha channel. And um, so we want to leave the alpha the same. So what could we do to make it just dark and, and not um, also transparent. So we could do it, we could multiply it by a vector. So we have four channels, so we make a list of four items and we say, I want to multiply every column by 0.5, but I want to multiply the alpha channel by one. 
so it stays the same. So if we look at this, now I'm getting another table where each of the three first columns is divided by two and the last column stays the same. So let's check this out. Now I've just made the picture darker without it being um, more transparent. And so one more thing, let's try to make something an inverse picture. So I'm taking 255 and I actually want to um, invert it this way. So I'm subtracting every pixel from 255. Now, what I don't want to subtract is again the alpha channel. So in order to get this right, what I would do is first, um, I am uh, multiplying the whole table by one, but I'm getting rid of, of the alpha channel by multi multiplying it by zero. So now this is fully transparent. Then I'm reverting it. Now I'm getting the inverse and now I'm checking it out. So now here is my inverse picture. And this is the cool thing about this is that it's actually very fast. So we can also do the same thing by using the video snap on myself and the pixels from that. So now I can get a live video um, and it's, it's the inverse. And I can even do this all the time by wrapping a forever block around this. Um, and now I'm getting a live video um, that is the inverse um, as it is uh, recorded live. Um, isn't that fun? That's kind of the essence of these hyperblocks, as we call them. Um, let me show you one more thing. If we um, import a data set, like here's the infamous passenger list of the Titanic, and um, uh, you can see this is a table, it's a two-dimensional list. Um, so what we can get is we can use the item block. The first item would be the first row of the table. The fifth item would be the fifth row of the table. We can get the numbers from 1 to 10 to get the first 10 records of the table. Now, if we don't want the first um, a line because it contains the column headers, we can say start at the second one. If we want to go all through all the whole data set, we can say up to 888. So now I'm cutting off the first line. Um, so what if I'm just interested in, let's say, the name and whether he or she survived. So I just want to want to get the third and the first column. So here's what I can do. I can take a list. Now I'm going to put in a number here. I'm, 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 I'm just getting a record. But if I'm getting another list in here, now I'm at the column level. And I can say, I want to get the third column and the first column. Um, so now I'm getting another table with just the selected columns. And what if I want this for only a range of the table? I can expand this and kind of go back in the dimensions and say, okay, I want this for, let's say the numbers two to 888. So this is how I can select a range. If I just want it from say the number 30 to 40. So now I'm getting 10 records out of the middle of the data set. This is a powerful way to boost a certain set of operations such that we don't need to use the more general case, which would be higher order functions or loops or state for everything. It's also something that we can make very fast because we know that these simple operations will terminate. So we don't have to make provisions for letting the user stop the process as it is running. 
It is something we're very excited about. It'll make projects hopefully more interesting to play with, large data sets with streaming data, um, and uh, we'll, um, can't wait to find all the cool projects that people are going to build with this, that you are going to build with this. Um, again, this is in the next version of Snap that we're building right now. That version is going to be the version 6.0. It's going to come out in the summer of the year 2020. Um, watch out for the new Hyperblocks feature.